Hi everyone, it's Lawrence here from Revit Structure Blog. In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to detail grids with the coordinates at each intersection. So it's a known problem that if we want to place down spot coordinates at grid intersections, we really have a tough time. For example, if I select the annotate ribbon, and then we go ahead and specify a spot coordinate, you'll see here that Revit is looking to snap to an element, but not an element intersection. So it's going to be really difficult for me to try and actually get that precise coordinate. You can see here, because of the dimension, it should be 4,600. But you'll see here, I'll be playing around forever more trying to get that intersection. One way around this is to draw a reference plane. So of course here, I could draw a little reference plane off from that location, something like that. And then if I go back to annotate and we select spot coordinate, you can now see here that I can select that location. However, the problem with that is that's still very manual. I've got to go back through and do that for every single grid. And of course, if the grid changes, I've got to re-detail all of those locations. Of course, I might also want to schedule these for the contractor so they can go out and very simply set out this grid on site. So let's look at a better way of doing this utilizing Dynamo. So before we go into the Dynamo script in a lot of depth, let's take a look at what we've currently got. So here we are now inside Dynamo, and I'm just going to begin by running this script and then looking at the results inside Revit. So we'll run this. We'll then go back into Revit, and you'll now notice that we have a bespoke family inserted at each grid intersection. So this one here, you can see, is called setting out point. And you'll notice here that I have some shared parameters which are extracting data. So here, for example, I've got grid intersection A2, and we have an easting value of 4,600 and a northing of zero, which is correct. If we pick on this family here, for example, you can see this setting out is B2, which is correct. And again, we have an easting value of 4,600 and a northing of negative 5,000. If I go and change the project base point, so let's make this one 15,000 and 15,000. Let's now run the Dynamo script again to refresh. And we'll go back in here and we'll now select this location here. And of course, now you can see that we've got 15,000 added to 4,600, which has given us 19,600. And of course, the northing is 15,000. OK, let's also look at some other benefits of this. If I now go to my grid setting out over here, you can see I've got, now got a schedule of all of my grid setting out positions. So I've got all of my grid intersections here, the eastings and the northings. And of course, if I wanted to tag these things, I could do just that. So I could go to tag in here. Let's do tag all and we'll do this automatically. Yep, and we'll tag out all of those coordinate points. Um, to manipulate these, of course, I can save them all. Or, sorry, I can select them all even. And then we can just use the nudge keys here just to shift these into a, a slightly better location. OK, so let's now take a look at how all of this is actually working. I'm going to begin by showing you the family. So if I select this family and then do edit family, you'll see in here that this is just a generic component. Now, actually, I have created some object styles in here. So you'll see that I've got set an out point as a subcategory. Um, I've got material set here. And if we go to our family types, you can see here that we have a few things set up to help me control the geometry. So I've got cone height and cone radius, which is just a size or dimension, that family you can see. But then we've got some shared parameters set up. I've got the grid intersection, the grid type, easting and northing. OK, let's now take a look at the dynamo graph itself. So here's the dynamo graph, and what we'll now do is step through each element. So let's start with this blue group over here. So what this is doing is organizing grids into groups based on the grid names. So here I'm extracting out all of the grid names in here. I'm converting strings to numbers. Now, of course, what's happening here is it's getting the numbered grids through, but the lettered grids are coming up null. Actually, that's why you see an error here. What I'm then doing is I'm saying if that object is null, then filter the list out. So, of course, now I've got all of my numbered grids in one group and all my lettered grids in another group. OK, so what's then happening is we are then separating those with strings. So you can see here that the output of this is now going to be the combined elements together. So we've got A-1, A-2 and so on. So that's just generating the uh, grid references. 
And in here, this is the magic bit. What this is doing is this is getting the grid curves. So this is the underlying geometry of each of those grids. We're then intersecting them. And then what we're doing is we're then getting those intersections and we're writing all of those values out into those shared parameters that we talked about earlier on. Now to help us out here, you can see that I'm getting the project base point coordinate. So I'm getting the east, west and the north, south value. And then what we're doing over here is we're doing some simple maths to actually take the setting out points over here and then adding those to the project base point coordinates, which is then deriving the true coordinate of all of these grids, which, as I said, are then being written out to those shared parameter files. Now, I'm going to set the graph to automatic mode in here. And what I'm going to do is just show you what happens when we come and put in some different intersections in here. So if I want to create an additional grid in here, so we can create our grid in there. Uh, we'll come along here and we'll call this 2.1. As soon as I do that, you'll now see all of the families are inserted through. Obviously in here, we can edit the witness line on the dimension just to split those out. And of course here, if we do um, tag again, and we'll click on tag all, we'll go to our generic models again, and we'll apply the remaining tags in there. And of course, I could quite easily then manipulate those again just to move them into a slightly better position and so on. And of course, if we go to our grid setting out table in here, you'll additionally now see that we have that new grid type added in yep, down through here. So you can see we've got uh, grid A2, B2, C2, D2 and so on. OK, so a fairly flexible script and quite useful to be able to actually schedule out our coordinates like this to issue out to a contractor and also be able to tag those grids quite easily in here. OK, hope that's been useful. See you all soon.